I'm John Healy, and this is Emma Tanagaki, okay? All of these items that she has made, this is jewelry. They're one of a kind. The particular pieces on these are crocheted stainless steel. And the material is 00 4.5, a little thicker than a human hair. The findings are handmade. This over here is origami-inspired bronze mesh folding. This is a new technique, which is only three months old. This technique will be taught at the International Origami uh, Meeting in Los Angeles this November. From it, we have developed, she has developed another technique. She takes <coughs> copper mesh, origami folded, and it's coated with glass. This particular item, it gives a beautiful color as it's transmitted, and then also she is making jewelry from this. All the particular pieces here are prototypes because they're only three months old. The technique is only three months old at this time. This is Emma, who doesn't want to talk to you. Say hi. Hello, I am Emma. I am definitely camera shy and people shy. Thank you very much. That's why I stay at home and make all this stuff. Thank you. And that should do it. I myself am a glass sculptor and a photographer and a metal sculptor. We have been in business. I've been doing this since 1969. And she's been a partner with me for, I'm not allowed to say how many years, but for a while. <laughs> Name of the game. This is what we do, and we like it. Thank you. Uh, I'm Ken Yanamoto and uh, born and raised here in Albuquerque, but uh, I do, uh, I've been collecting samurai swords and armor since 1970, and this is uh, armor from 19, I mean 1850, and all my swords are uh, from Japan. My oldest is 1390, which is the Daisho, black one here. And uh, I have everything from uh, 1390 to 1977, which was, I had made for myself by Norimitsu. And uh, I've been doing this ever since the 70s and uh, enjoy it. A little bit of history that uh, my grandfather and father for me had. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kristen Chapapas and I'm here with the Arita Student Association from the University of New Mexico under the direction of Professor Catherine Simon. Here at UNM we practice a wonderful art. It's Arita Porcelain. It has a 400 year old history in Japan. It was the first porcelain technique to reach Japan and we are fortunate enough to have it at the University of New Mexico. We've had a program in collaboration with the Japanese National Living Treasure Sensei Manje Inoue for about 37 years now. He comes and does periodic visits and we visit him in Japan as well and we are so thankful and fortunate to be able to practice this program here in New Mexico.
And here on our tables we just have examples of student works as well as our professor Catherine Simon. Some of her works are up here as well. And everything is high fire to cone 10. It's true porcelain. So colors look absolutely brilliant as well as celadons and clears showing the true nature of the porcelainous body. Here we have Adam Padilla, a fifth year student with us at the Arita, student Por Arita Porcelain Student Association. And he's just doing a throwing demo for all of our guests here at the event. So uh, the wheel turns uh, clockwise, and it, it's like a Japanese style, or yeah, uh, techniques come from Arita, Japan. And so what you want to do is you want to kind of um, scoop it, like if you're like drinking water. Yeah. So try to make a doorknob shape for me. Yeah. Okay. Then you'll want to hollow it out like this, right? All right, yeah. Oh, whoops. So I, if, you wanna, little... if you want to center it, just kind of push a new little forward this. and then like release lightly. I'm a little new to this, so. Yeah, yeah, just feel it, have fun. Oh, whoop. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> so there's a there's a technique to uh, go in there. You would use like your one thumb and then squeeze outward like that. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Sorry, just just using a bit of water is really helpful, as you of course know, because you yeah. know way more about this than me. All right, so let's get some slip in there. This is slip. Uh, you just make it with the water. And then, so the next step would be to use your two thumbs. So can you make your hands like that? Yeah. And then what you want to do, go more on this outside part, and then kind of sweep down with your thumbs and then kind of fill it and then bring it up. Nice. Nice, yeah. Okay. That was good, that was good. All right. Okay, so let's slow the wheel down a little bit. Oh, I can't see where it's at, thank you. Maybe that's a little too, too much. Uh, yeah, slip is good. We use that stuff. All right, so uh, what, what I want you to do is kind of color it up. So like kind of if you're about to drink some water, do it nice and slow and even. Yeah, so nice, slow, and even. Good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, my name's Mary Sweet. I do woodblock prints which are here, and I do them Japanese style with watercolor ink, mainly because I'm allergic to oil and solvents. Uh, that's how I learned. I've been doing them since 1993, but I've been a painter all my life, and uh, acrylic and watercolor. Um, <laughs> uh, I've been printing here demos. Most of my ones on the wall are reduction blocks, which mean that each print was printed on one block, starting with light and working to dark, so all the colors are on one block in small editions. 
Here I'm working on a multi-block for a demo. And uh, here's the middle block. <laughs> The light blue was printed first, then the blue, the darker blue, and then the green that's on the bottom of this one. And see if I can find a, a finished one. There's a finished one. Hi, are you ready? Hi, I'm Mike Thornton. Uh, I've got my display here at the Akimatsuri showing my work in stoneware and porcelain, the majority of the work I have displayed is uh, wood-fired stoneware. Uh, that means it's uh, uh, fired in a kiln that's fueled by wood and the particular look of the pottery is characteristic of the wood-fired pieces. Um, this is a, uh, and, and in keeping with the, the, the theme of Japanese craftsmanship for this Akimatsuri, uh, this, this work uh, utilizes traditional Japanese techniques and the aesthetic of traditional Japanese pottery. And they're uh, fired in a wood fired kiln that is uh, modeled after the Japanese kiln called the Anagama. So uh, the majority of this work has been decorated uh, in most part by the effect of the firing itself. The, the firing in the wood kiln and the wood ashes um, collecting on the pottery during the firing and creating a, an organic and, and uh, random kind of patterning and coloration. I do have a few examples of uh, non-wood fired pieces, a couple of pieces of porcelain work. Uh, so it, 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 they, the porcelain and the wood fired work exemplify kind of two ends of the spectrum of Japanese uh, ceramics. And so I, I, I just have an interest in all of it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Yoshiko Shimano. I'm representing a University of New Mexico printmaking area. I'm an instructor at the printmaking area, University of New Mexico. Uh, today we are in Akimatsuri and representing a printmaking area again. And uh, we have a student print in the back and then also uh, the other sections. And then also we are doing a, a very simple demonstration. It's called linoleum cut, making a little cards like this. So actually, uh, whoever come to the booth, uh, he or she can, or children, inking up the matrix. We call the matrix, it's called a plate. Uh, this plate is made of linoleum sheet and already carving away some of the shape and sh and uh, uh, lines and we have uh, three colors prepared inking up and then actually print it and make a card For this Akimatsuri, I'm not showing my own work, but I have been about 20 exhibitions, uh, solo exhibition over, and then I have uh, over 100 uh, group exhibitions. Uh, but today we are focusing about the student work at University of New Mexico.
Hi, my name is G uh, Luis. <laughs> I'm already screwing this up. <laughs> this is Gene right here. Um, he's a master with watercolor and everything else. Uh, I happen to draw with inks and pencils mo primarily. And we're here to help out with the, uh, the Japanese Cultural Center, just raising money with our artwork. Gene has just been crushing it with the caricatures today. Just... Yeah. He was hardly even allowed to take a break today. <laughs> Well, the, the likeness, the likeness is unreal. <laughs> now it's your sister's turn. <laughs> Ow. That was a compliment. I know. <laughs> you got to pay him. Yeah. $100. <laughs> oh, now, now do I talk? Hi, I'm Luis. This is Jean. Say hi, Jean. Hi, Jean. <laughs> we're both uh, artists. Um, we're here helping out with the, J the Japanese Cultural Center. Right, <laughs> and um, this is our artwork. We have uh, been doing this all our lives. <laughs> okay. um, I, I derive a lot of my, my style from Japanese anime and manga and other aspects of the it's culture. Fun. I'm a big fan. So, I saw him before. Probably more fanboy than anything. <laughs> um, anime and manga have been uh, a big influence of my art for a while since, gosh, from... I can't remember why. I remember watching bootleg copies of Akira and Dragon Ball Z before the internet, you know, provides us everything. Uh, but uh, from what I can remember, um, a lot of that stuff was drew inspiration from post-World War II uh, after the bomb dropped. <laughs> and they were dro when the American and Japanese cultures were kind of uh, fusing together and trading art. Uh, Disney film, I, from what I understand, provide a lot of inspiration to a lot of what today's Japanese anime kind of became. Um, Mostly, you know, the big eyes that's stereotypically kind of associated with anime and manga. Um, from what I've been told, it actually came from early Disney, like some Snow White and uh, a lot of those classic animated fairy tales. But, you know, that's the thing about art. It, it inspires others to do better themselves and create art themselves. And, well, not just art, do whatever it is they do. Um, and great art will inspire somebody to do great themselves, I think.